the year is 1954. The place? Quarable. There was an impressive case of a landed craft complete with occupants. On September 10th, 1954, at about 22.30 hours, the witness, Marius de Wilde, was alerted by the sound of his dog howling and trying to get inside his house near Corrible. De Wilde took his flashlight and went outside. He walked towards the tracks, and he saw an object some six or seven meters away from him. Behind him, he could hear some steps. At this time, the witness advised, Two creatures such as I had never seen before were not more than three or four yards from me. The one in front turned toward me. The beam of my light caught a reflection from glass or metal where his face should have been. I had the distinct impression that his head was enclosed in a diver's helmet. In fact, both creatures were dressed in one-piece outfits like the suits divers wear. They were very short, probably less than three and a half feet tall, but very wide in the shoulders. And the helmets protecting their heads looked enormous. I could see their legs, small in proportion to their height. It seemed to me, but on the other hand, I couldn't see any arms. I don't know whether they had any. De Wilde tried to get hold of the entities, but when he was six feet away he was blinded by an extremely powerful light emitting from a sort of square opening in a dark object resting on the nearby railway tracks. I closed my eyes and tried to yell, but I couldn't. It was just as if I had been paralyzed. I tried to move, but my legs wouldn't obey me. Finally, the beam of light went out and Dewell found himself able to move again and ran towards the railway track. The object was rising from the ground and hovering, and a thick dark steam was coming out of the bottom with a low whistling sound. The craft went up vertically and eventually disappeared. When Dewell recovered from his movements, he attempted to tell his wife and then his neighbor of what he had seen, but neither of them had seen nor heard anything. He then tried the local police, which sent some police officers to his home. Dewell could not approach the point where everything happened, because it made him feel sick giving the officers a certainty that his story was not a hoax. Also, objects which were energized by battery, like DeWalt's flashlight and telephone, stopped working. Before sunrise, investigators were already all over the place. The investigation which followed involved the airborne gender Mary, the mobile gender Mary, and the DST, France's equivalent of the British MI5 or the American FBI. Many years later, DeWalt revealed that the DST had calculated that the indentations made by the object indicated that it must have weighed at least 35 tons.